Hello Wonderful Person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to be talking about this somewhat unexpected discovery of what seems to be the largest bacterium ever found. The bacterium residing in various mangroves of a French island known as Guadeloupe. But what makes this bacterium extremely strange is the fact that this is a single cell that's visible with a naked eye. Which sort of creates a problem for our definition of what a microbe is. By definition, microbes are actually not supposed to be visible with a naked eye. But in the last couple of decades, a lot of different scientific teams discovered some really unusual species across the planet, with some of them being gigantic in size. And so let's discuss this discovery of Thio Margarita Magnifica in a little bit more detail and talk a little bit more about what we know about this bacterium. But I guess first of all, this is obviously not the first discovery of a giant unusual bacterium. The first one was back in 1999, the study about which you can find in the description below. And since then, the scientists have been able to find quite a lot of these very strange, very giant bacteria, with the genus itself now referred to as the Thio Margarita. The type of bacteria we normally find in extremely hydrogen sulfide rich environments, including places like mud volcanoes, which are normally quite rich in a lot of sulfur and methane. With all of this bacteria being what's known as the camelithotroph, they usually uh, use a lot of different chemical reactions and use a lot of reduced inorganic species of sulfur in order to create metabolism and to essentially produce energy and then fixate all of the carbon into various types of biomass. Or in other words, these bacteria rely on very specific chemical elements for their survival. With the name itself, Thio Margarita, meaning sulfur pearl. With the name coming from these sulfur granules that you see right there, that produce a lot of different scattered light. And although some organisms, such as for example slime molds, can also produce various very large formations that sort of resemble a single cell as well, in this case, this is technically a combination of different cells grouped together. Which, by the way, you can also learn more about from one of the older videos on the channel that should be somewhere in the description below. But unlike the slime mold, this here is a single cell. A very, very, very large cell. And a cell that seems to include two parts, two very unusual sacs. With the larger sac containing roughly around 75% of the volume of the bacterium and mostly being water. Which is actually probably why the bacterium can grow so large. But the smaller sac containing all of the required DNA and all of the proteins needed for the cell to function and to grow. With this beautiful image right here sort of showing us how all of this compares to, for example, a typical tardigrade. Or here's how it compares to, for example, a typical fruit fly. And when the scientists originally found this particular bacterium, which was actually over five years ago, they actually thought that this was probably some kind of a fungus, they didn't think it was a bacterium. Mostly because, on average, a typical bacterium is about 0.001 millimeters in size. But the biggest Thio Margarita Magnifica so far was found to be nearly 2 centimeters, approximately 50 times larger than the last giant bacterium discovered. 2 centimeters is of course almost an inch. And in this case, 2 centimeters is probably not even the record. The scientists in this case believe that because of the way that this bacterium reproduces, and if it's not touched by the wind, if it's not eaten, if it's not moved by something, or if it's not washed away by water, it could theoretically grow even larger. But the question here is of course, well, first of all, how exactly is this possible? How can this bacterium exist? And how exactly is it able to function and to become so extremely large? Because for the longest time, various microbiologists have always believed that in order for bacteria to survive and to be very successful, they actually have to be relatively small. Mostly because they eat, they breathe, they get rid of various toxins, through the process you see right here, known as diffusion. And in order for diffusion to be functional, the object has to be relatively small. And so because there's actually a limit to how far away various molecules can travel inside the cell, if the bacterium is really large, it's just going to be unable to provide enough energy or various resources for certain parts of its cell. And so one of the major discoveries coming from these various giant bacteria was in regards to how they adapted to this. It looks like, for the most part, most of their really important cellular contents are actually mostly located on the outer cell of the wall, with pretty much everything in the middle being the water-filled sac. Whereas some other giant bacteria have found a different way to deal with this. Inside of their cell they usually have really large vacuoles, each filled with various life-supporting chemicals, including various types of nitrates, 
needed for the cell to function. In other words, various types of gigantic cells seem to have discovered different strategies in order to still be chemically efficient even though their size might limit their functionality. But when it comes to this particular bacterium, there were some other things that were very unexpected and extremely unusual. For example, their genome. It seems that this bacterium contains approximately 12,000 genes, which is about three times the amount that we expect from any bacterium. And it also seems to contain approximately half a million copies of its own DNA, all of which, compared to other bacterium, is extremely unusual. To be more specific, it seems that there are roughly around 11 million bases compared to approximately 4 million bases in a regular bacterium, each able to then produce 12,000 different genes. And remember, we think that there are approximately 23,000 genes on average in a typical human body, so 11,000 genes for a bacterium is quite a lot. But the other surprising difference between this bacterium and everything else we know in nature is the fact that, well, here there seem to be two different containers, two different types of sacs. One of them is responsible for containing a lot of proteins and DNA, the other one seems to contain mostly water. And this type of an unusual structure has never actually been seen in a typical bacterium, mostly because usually the DNA and everything else in a bacterium simply kind of floats around on the inside. So we don't really expect any complex structures from any bacterium in nature. And that's of course the main difference between so-called eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. The eukaryotic cells we're made out of are more complex and they do have a lot of different structures on the inside, so-called organelles, with nucleus being responsible for the DNA storage. And so by finding a structure that seems to have membrane and protects DNA and other proteins and seems to be present in the bacterium, to some extent hints on the potential connection between eukaryotes and prokaryotes, or basically between bacterium and more advanced cells. With some scientists already kind of suggesting that maybe this is that missing link we're looking for in regards to the evolution of life on the planet. Although I guess the other side of this argument is that maybe this is just a really strange organism, something that has evolved in a very strange way. As a matter of fact, it could be an example of what's known as convergent evolution, when different types of species or different types of organisms evolve a similar feature. In this case, maybe it's a bacterium that evolved to have a cell protecting things like DNA, kind of similar to how eukaryotes evolved nucleus as well. And by then increasing in size and evolving larger and larger structures, it might have discovered a very successful evolutionary strategy. Something that we just don't really understand yet. Either way though, this is an extremely exciting discovery and potentially represents one of the most unusual bacterium found in the last few decades or possibly ever. A bacterium that we've never seen before and a bacterium that's going to be answering a lot of questions about life on our planet and more importantly, how life could maybe evolve on other planets as well. The idea known as astrobiology. But we'll actually talk about this in some of the future videos, so on that note, check out all of the relevant links in the description below and similar videos on this topic somewhere in the description as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.